So this LM331 chip we have is actually specific to the task of converting voltage to frequency. A voltage to frequency converter like this is actually pretty useful for applications that need to sense really weak signals that, uh, that don't change very quickly because you can convert the voltage to a frequency and then uh, kind of count pulses and integrate that over a period of time. So I've found circuits like this inside of uh, digital scale. I've used circuits like this in the past for making uh, kind of spectrometer equipment. It, it's a pretty nice way of getting kind of arbitrary precision analog to digital conversion. Here's the pinout. We've got a frequency output. This wide dynamic range is actually one reason you'll see people use a voltage to frequency converter instead of a traditional A to D since with the same electronics, you can sense uh, very different levels of, of signal intensity by adjusting your integration period um, when sampling the resulting pulses. So if you built, for example, a light sensor around this chip, you could adjust your exposure by just controlling the time window uh, in which you're counting pulses from this voltage to frequency converter. Then you could use that to get a very wide range of different input voltages out of the same circuit. 100 dB is 10 orders of magnitude. If you're at all interested in this kind of a circuit, I would highly recommend going through the data sheet. It's pretty interesting. So this block diagram gives us a simplified idea of how this circuit is designed to work. So the input is based on a comparator, which looks at two voltages and kind of quickly swings from one output rail to the other based on which voltage is higher and which one's lower. So you can think of it as a differential amplifier with very large gain. So it's like it's taking the positive input and subtracting the negative input and then kind of multiplying that by an arbitrarily large number and then limiting that to the actual supply rails, the voltages available. And so that's what this comparator is doing. And in effect, this is being used as part of a feedback loop to match these two inputs by kind of delivering these little current pulses into this resistor capacitor circuit. So this one-shot timer here generates pulses of a particular controlled length. So that has two outputs, one providing the actual output for the LM331, and then one going back here as a negative feedback for this entire circuit. And that feedback path switches these little controlled current pulses into a resistor capacitor circuit here. So as this input voltage changes, it changes the set point that this resistor capacitor network has to reach in order for the one-shot timer to go and send another corrective current pulse into it. So then a bit further down in the data sheet, there are a bunch of examples. On the bold port packaging, there's a little dotted line indicating the separation between the original schematic and the FET and LED that just provides some visual output. Let's try hooking this thing up to the scope. So if I zoom in a lot, we can see that the pulses are always about three microseconds. I have the scope set to trigger on the negative edge there. But the time between pulses jumps around a lot, and that's, that's actually noise in the incoming light signal. With this kind of integrator circuit, you can easily filter out the noise just by counting pulses for a longer period of time. The dynamic range of this circuit is pretty impressive. With the phototransistor covered up, I can get the frequency as low as around 120 hertz. Yeah, just with the light from this desk lamp here, now I'm getting around 900 hertz. If I point a flashlight into the sensor, I can get that to go way higher. Yeah, that's around six and a half kilohertz. That's around 22 kilohertz. That signal happens to be conveniently in a good frequency range for audio. I wonder what this sounds like. <laughs> so this kind of controls the bass tone that you get for any particular light level.